Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bitch Side Podcast channel. I'm your host, the HOD of the BSB. Like, comment on this video, share it, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications, of course, to receive all the updates on this kind of match recaps, all the other videos on this channel, of course. And we're coming to you straight after the end of the game between Wolves and Tottenham. It was almost a smash and grab for Tottenham, but not quite. Of course, Jose Mourinho changed his side from the last game against Leicester City, starting with a 3 Four, one, two of sorts, knowing that Wolves have some basic players down the flanks, of course, so we need to close down and reinforce the uh, the wings in terms of the uh, the speed that could be danger for them on, on the wings, or as well as the crosses that could cause them all sorts of trouble for their centre halves. Nuno Espirito Santo always also changed uh, his side a little bit. He doesn't. Uh, he didn't play with the 3-4-3 three, the, uh, three, three that he usually does, he switched it to a 4-3-3 three, three, um, starting with Ruben Neves, Moutinho um, and uh, Daniel Podence uh, in the midfield, almost a 4-2-3-1 if you look at it really. Um, Danny Podence playing as a proper number 10 in that as well. Um, Tottenham started the game really strong, like the first minute they scored a goal, they capitalised on a bad clearance from the Wolves defence on a corner, Ben Davis set up Tangin Nombele and Tangin Nombele took the shot, I mean I thought it took a deflection of a defender but it didn't. Uh, it was a goal for Tottenham as early as the first minute, 57 seconds exactly it took Tottenham to score and after that of course I think you could predict what is the rest of the game was. It was Wolves uh, were drawn out, of course. They usually don't get drawn out a lot. They save that for the second half, really. But they were forced, of course, to run behind the scoreline since the first minute, literally, after Tottenham took the early lead. Tottenham, of course, Mourinho loves that. He sits deep, defends. And with the 3 5 2 sort of formation that he's employing with Ndombele, of course, doing the defensive job and doing the defensive duties um, more than likes of the Celso and the Melo when they come in that, into that midfield. Um, he had one of the best games, really. Um, he's one of the few Tottenham players, really, that had a terrific game. Son and Game today were pretty light in contribution to the game. They didn't add much to the, um, to the Tottenham game, really. They didn't find spaces to move in and I and I talked about it in the um, in the podcast before the, the Boxing Day weekend um, matches that Wolves are not a side that get drawn out a lot so they so Tottenham didn't, didn't exactly find spaces that they'd love to find in, in lots of occasions they found like one proper two situations at the very best where they like drifted and found spaces in the middle and that is down to Don Bailey mostly who make who's making the, the, the run, making the effort and holding the ball really well in that midfield for Tottenham. Um, Wolves played the crossing game, I think, too much really uh, for their liking. Again, the reinforced flank didn't allow a lot of, uh, of, of width and a lot of depth to move into, not a lot of spaces into that pockets because the Wolves wingers, Adam Traore in particular, loves to move into those pockets of spaces. Peter Neto likes to play a little bit more wide, but I think Adam Traore is more incisive, more direct in his run, but didn't find that space. So the first half ended with a Tottenham lead. The second half was pretty much the same story. Tottenham regressed even further. They had a good spell in the five or six minutes in the beginning of the second half where they looked like they might score again, they might do it again. Um, they, they looked like they might uh, equalize early on, or sorry, add the second goal early on in the second half, but it wasn't to be. As the game wore on, of course, Wolves started getting more and more forward, starting employing more uh, offensive uh, weapons, of course. Uh, as for Tottenham, Jose Mourinho made um, a simple change. He reverted to the 4-2-3-1 formation, taken off, and Don Bailey put it in Bergwijn. Uh, playing with a double pivot of Oybeg and Wings in that midfield, and that took a little bit of a steam out of the uh, out of the Tottenham side, really, because Ndombele was doing a lot of work that uh, Eric Lamela and Eric Bergwijn, of course, the substitutes later on, couldn't be able to do it, and Hoybeg on his own, as a sort of work in the defensive aspect of the game, as Winks deciding to become the box on, box-to-box player, didn't work exactly. And as the game wore on, of course, uh, Wolves started to find more spaces, they started to annoy the defenders a little bit more, and at the 86th minute, it was the Achilles Hill of Tottenham, it happened against um, it happened against Liverpool, it happens against Leicester City, the long balls 
and the set pieces are the problems really for Tottenham. And the set pieces was Tottenham's problem on the night against Wolves, just like against Liverpool. They can see the goal from a corner late in the game. The zonal marking for Tottenham was really, really bad, leaving Roman Sayers to come all the way inside the six yard box and had just just drift the ball with his header like it was a one of those slick headers uh, a la Constantina Smanolas in the in the Champions League bank a couple of years ago he just like slicks through it with with his um, with the top of his head and it's into the net of uh, Hugo Lloris one all for Wolves and that gave Wolves an extra motivation to spend the rest of the game in the attack really they almost had a double when Fabio Silva had a header inside the 6-yard box as well but it was a very bad header that went straight into Hugo Lloris's hand. Overall it was a bad draw for Tottenham continuing this string of, of matches. This is now winless in 4 for Tottenham and this is a bad form for a side that was just a month ago I think tipped to win the league and realistically they were looking at a potential um, you know, top 4 finish uh, this season. This doesn't look well for Mourinho. Um, certainly, I mean, I always questioned until when Tottenham are going to be playing with this if sufficient economic sort of, um, you know, mentality where they just do just a little in the game and they try to, to pick up three points every time. This, this will not work every time and certainly in the last four games it didn't work. Uh, they come against a, Wolves, uh, a compact Wolves side that, you know, managed the game well, I think, after the goal, I would say. They didn't allow Tottenham a lot of space, didn't allow Tottenham a lot of danger to move on the counter-attacks. Didn't allow them a lot of counter-attacks, in fact. They pretty much neutralised Son and Kane. They did a very good job neutralising their former man, Doherty, as well, and neutralising Regulon on the other side. The support was not coming because um, sometimes when the solutions are not found in the depth of the field, they try to play crosses for, for Harry Kane. Tottenham didn't play a lot of those, um, so overall I think it was a disappointing draw from the point of view of Tottenham, a very important draw from the point of view of Wolves, of course that takes them a step upwards in the table, they want to finish in the top half, they want to keep their reputation of being a big and, and hard to beat side in the Premier League at the moment. Um, this is I think as um, disappointing for Tottenham as ever, this run again, winless in four, and now probably I mean, they're, they, they're probably going to be regressing even more as the time um, goes on. Um, in the end, Tottenham set piece defending, two things that really cannot meet, and that is what Wolves took advantage of. They found the code to beat uh, Tottenham's defence, to crack the Tottenham defence, really, or Tottenham cracked themselves. I, I think it's one of these things, really. Uh, looking at the last four games, everybody now seems to know what to do against Tottenham. Mourinho, I think, should be a little bit flexible tactically and should probably change his formation coming into the next couple of weeks, really, because if he had a couple of bad results in the next uh, two weeks or so, it is going to be ridiculous uh, for him uh, in the second half of the season and probably we're not going to be talking about Tottenham in the same way we're doing right now. This is all for the game between Wolves and Tottenham. Again, it was almost a smashing grab. For Mourinho, but not quite. Like, share, comment on the video what you think of this game, of course, of this result. Subscribe to the channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates of this match recaps, uh, the podcast, and other videos on this channel. And note and disclaimer really, I'm not going to be doing any podcast starting from tomorrow. So today's episode was the last one. I'm going to be taking a break um, for a week. I'm going to be returning on hopefully, uh, hopefully on Saturday. I'm going to be returning with an episode. Uh, or on Friday, I would say on Friday, I would, uh, I would take a five day break, I'm going to be back on Friday talking about the New Year's fixtures of course, which means that I'm going to be not talking a lot about the double game weekend, I'm going to have another content to upload on this channel and certainly uh, I would be doing match recaps if possible, again if possible, uh, I don't know about my schedule, that's it. Uh, follow us on social media at SidePSP, PitchSidePod, Twitter and Instagram respectively. Listen to the podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts or wherever you can get it from. And catch us at www.webreathesports.com. Read more articles written by yours truly. Until the next video, of course, I was your boy HD of the PSP and goodbye.